Hey everybody, it's Yasmin here. Thank you for tuning in. Gosh, I don't even have my earrings on. I'm a bit exhausted today. I was on the phone to my mother in Australia till 4am trying to get my son a birthday present. Don't tell him. Um, anyway, hello. So I thought what I'm going to do today is I'm going to um, try and uh, zhuzh up my vibe because I'm actually going to do uh, an event for um, my lovely Aquarius Rising people today at, at midday, so in about 50 minutes from now. So if you're Aquarius Rising, click the link. And um, I thought what I'd do is I'd talk about rising signs because they are an ongoing source of mystery to people. And um, I talk a little bit about that and I'll take a card. How is everybody today? I did, um, what did I do yesterday? I did, oh yeah, I did my, um, I did a, an event with the New York Open Centre from 10.30 p.m. my time to about 12.30 a.m. And we did it on Zoom and it was so good because I could see everybody. And as much as I love this, because I can see your comments, um, I really enjoyed that Zoom last night, being able to see everyone's faces. And if you're in the Sun, Moon and Stars membership portal, um, I'll be doing my uh, quarterly catch up this month, so I'll be able to see you all as well. I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm the kind of kid who had pen pals <laughs> when I was little. I had pen pals all over the world. And I just like, I love the idea of connecting with people from all over the world, and especially in this, you know, in this way when we're all doing um, moon stuff. And you know, astrology, moonology and astrology. So let me tell you, I, I struggle with this. I really struggle with trying to explain rising science. So let me have a go, okay. So people ask me all the time, why do you always say read your rising sign? And there's a simple answer, but it's not simple to explain. I think maybe, do I have a chart here? I'm bound to have a chart here somewhere, if I can just find it. Got charts left, right and centre around this house. Yeah, no. I mean, basically what it is, your rising sign, think of it like this, it doesn't help to show you a chart anyway. Oh, people there know their rising sign. Anyone out there, Aquarius rising, let me know. Um, basically, your horoscope chart, as you might know, is divided up into 12 sections. It's really annoying. I've got, so, I mean, I've got wall-to-wall -wall charts in this place and I, ah, no, yes, found one. There we go. So there's an example of a chart, okay? It's actually, you can, it's, there's a chart in the middle and then there's a chart for what's going on right now. So in the middle is where the planets were when this person was born. And uh, anyway, so that chart, those 12 houses are um, basically the houses are the sectors of your life. And uh, we've now closed the 50% off deal on my Moonology course, certification course, I'm sorry. Uh, but those of you who signed up, which is many, many of you, um, you will find out all about this very soon. Um, but... Uh, the houses are all about every single part of your life. So the first house is about your appearance. Second house is about cash, property and possessions. Third house is about communications, short trips and siblings and neighbours. Fourth house is home and family and so on. And it goes all the way around the chart. Now, if you can imagine that circle <coughs> kind of rotates depending on what your rising sign is, okay? It's dictated by the rising sign. Because people always say, why do you say read the rising sign? Is it more important? It's not so much about the fact that it's more important. It's about the fact that if you just read your sun sign in horoscopes or you just look at your chart with your sun sign, basically what you're doing is your... Um, putting your sun on your rising sign, which is not correct. If you do your rising sign, the whole chart sort of plays out differently, all right? So if 
you put your rising sign on your rising sign, then you can actually see what's going on in your first house, second house, third house, fourth house, fifth house, sixth house, seventh house, which by the way is relationships, you know, 10th house, which is career. So you actually get to see what each part of your life is about, what each part of your chart is about. I know I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this. I don't know why I can't explain it, but it's really important um, I did actually explain it in the course. So if you've done the course, if you bought the course, you will get the explanation. And I, it's about a 20 minute explanation. But in a nutshell, it affects the layout. So you know how sometimes you get those, you get those, um, like, just imagine there's a circle on there with a little tack in the middle and you put another circle on there and you can move the circle around. You know when people do have those little sort of things where, you know, one thing's on top of another and there's a little pin in there and you can you can rotate the circle, you know. So basically with this, what you're doing is in, you're, you're rotating the circle. So your rising sign's at nine o'clock on the chart and then everything else plays out. <sighs> doing a terrible job of explaining this, aren't I? So I'm going to give up in a minute. But so for example, in my diary, this is the one for next year, every month, you get this information here, which tells you where the new moon is. And I always say, read your rising sign. Because if you read your sun sign, it's sort of like the circle's not in the right place. It's like you've moved the sun to 9 a.m. on the, if you were rotating the chart, you've moved the sun to 9 a.m. But you don't want to do that. You want to move your rising sign to 9 a.m. And, and then you understand how everything else plays out okay so for example because today i'm doing my written in the stars for aquarius rising you know like you always know whatever rising sign you are which is dictated by your time date and place of birth okay then we know that they have leo on their seventh house because it's always the opposite side so someone was saying before their aries rising so if you're Aries rising, then the opposite sign to Aries, does anyone know? I'll, I'll wait, as they say in the classics. Who knows the opposite sign to Aries? There's about a 30 second delay on these things. Who knows the opposite sign to Aries? Oh, I just gave it away. Oh no, did I? No. If you're Aries rising, if you're Aries, nope. Nice try, Kathy. Yes, we have April M520 on Instagram and Karina Almazan, what a great name, on Facebook. Yes, it's Libra. The opposite sign to Aries is Libra. So whatever sign you are, your opposite sign rules your seventh house of love, okay? So if you're an Aries rising, Libra rules your seventh house of love, which means that when it comes to relationships, you act a bit like a Libra or a lot like a Libra. So let's do another one. What about if you are Sarah Ward, Aquarius Rising? Great, click the link above. Come and join us in about an hour. Um, okay, you've all, got, you've all got Libra. Let's do, what about if you're Sagittarius Rising? Okay, actually, let's do, let's do, there's Ar Aradana, is that your name? Is that how you say your name? Capricorn Rising, with, she's Capricorn with Gemini Rising. Okay, she's Capricorn. With, yes, that's right, Neha. So if you're Gemini rising, your opposite sign is Sagittarius. It's really easy to get a list. Just find a list of all the opposites and you'll know then which sign rules your love zone. So it can tell you about how you are in relationships. So if you're Gemini rising, Sagittarius rules your seventh house of love. So when it comes to relationships, you're a bit like a Sagittarian, which would mean you love freely and you're fun and you're not going to be a Klingon. Um, yeah. And also, you know, another big thing to why this is so important is because it's, it's the real chart. Like it's your chart. There's so much you can know about your chart without kind of spending five years learning astrology. Little things like this. And also there's the midheaven, which I won't go into now, but it's... Um, you know, that's about your working life, all right? So if you are Cancerian rising, or as I like to call it, moon child, if you are moon child rising, what's the opposite sign? What sign is opposite Cancer? 
Anybody? 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 What sign is opposite Cancer? That make what's the sign on the seventh house of your Cancerian rising? And we have a winner over on Instagram. It so is, says Capricorn. Yes. So if you are Cancerian rising, you have Capricorn as your opposite sign. So on your seventh house of love, because I have to say it like that, then you are, um, so you love like a Capricorn, which means that you're probably quite, you know, um, well, you take a kind of slightly serious approach to relationships. You're not going to be some kind of, you know, like the Sagittarius rising people are very flippity, flippity gibbet, you know, they'll just as easily go away for a 10 year trip around the world, but the Capricorn person will be there, solid and strong, might be a little bit controlling sometimes, you know, um, will always want to have, you know, traditions within the relationship, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yes, well done, Lulu. That's it. Um, so now, and why do I do my, this is a little bit tricky, but why do I do my written in the stars events, which I'm doing one in about, well, 20, I don't know how many minutes from now, probably 45 minutes from now for Aquarius rising. It's because once a year you get a new moon in your 11th house okay now what's an 11th house when it's at home it's a wishing zone basically and it's your it's your friendship zone your wishing zone and it's uh it's kind of a lucky part of your chart and so when you get the new moon in there which we had the new moon yesterday in sagittarius so it's the 11th house. Now there are 12 houses. So to work out where your 11th house is, you basically have to go back two signs. It's going to get a bit complicated here, but in a nutshell, if you're Aquarius rising, you just had the new moon eclipse in your 11th house. So that's why we're doing the written in the stars today for Aquarius rising, because this is absolutely the most powerful time of the year for you to make some wishes. And, um, you know, it's big enough when you get the new moon in your 11th house, but have a new moon eclipse, it's massive, okay? So you really want to make some wishes and harness that energy. So I hope that makes some sense. I will continue in my attempts to explain <laughs> um, the rising sign. I, I probably need to get, you know, some actual proper charts so I can rotate it and you can start to, I can start to do that. I feel like, I feel like it's a whole workshop, quite frankly. Um, so I will do that sometime. But anyway, speaking of my Aquarius Rising um, workshop, I have to go and go. I have to go and get ready to that because um, I don't have a filter when I do um, written in the stars, and uh, so I won't have my lovely false eyelashes filter. <laughs> I actually have to look semi-human. So I'm going to do a card. Going to do a card. So, who's this card for? If it's this card's for you, put your hand up, say this card is for me, or write it in the comments. Who doesn't love a coffee after going to bed too late? Okay. All right, all the likes, I'm going to assume they're for you, all the hearts all the comments, or just be at home and say, this card is for me. Whew, what have we got? You know, yesterday I did about five Facebook Lives because I had all these different commitments. And the same cards just kind of kept coming up. If anybody watched all of them, you would have seen. I got the Time to Breathe Out card twice, and I got the New Moon Eclipse card, I mean, two or three times. It was crazy. Oh, thanks, Val. All right, let's see what we've got today. Oh my God. <laughs> Talking about the new moon in Sagittarius, it's the full moon in Sagittarius. Not quite as impressive as the uh, new moon eclipse yesterday. All right, so this is an interesting card because I had a question and this actually is an interesting response. Yeah. 
look at the bigger picture. All right, so whatever you've been going through, look at the bigger picture. I, I was a bit annoyed with someone last night. And uh, look at the bigger picture. So if you look at what it is that you are thinking about or asking about or worried about, look at the bigger picture. What does the bigger picture show you? Okay, we'll just quickly read this. Are you thinking too much about the details of your dilemma? Fretting over the minutiae can be counterproductive or perhaps you're being all talk and no action. This card is a reminder that while it's good to think things through, sometimes you do need to step back and look at the bigger picture. What's the most positive thought you can have about it? Oh my God, who wrote this? <laughs> uh, it's very good advice from me to me, frankly. Um, now is the time to count your blessings, even if you don't exactly have what you want yet. Mm -hmm. This card is also a reminder that we have to take a few risks and go with uncertainty on this journey called life. Try to keep an open mind about what's for the best. The universe could surprise you. There you go. Take time out for a mini break or adventure. Oh, who doesn't want to go to Glastonbury this weekend? <laughs> I don't think we can. I think we're in lockdown again. I'm not even sure anymore what's happening. I went to bed at 4 a.m. after a big long um, talk with my mother who was trying to buy something online from Australia and it didn't work. And the last thing I remember seeing before I went to bed was an article saying, the virus has mutated and we're all going into hard lockdown again. I'm like, what? I haven't even looked yet this morning. Um, be confident without being overconfident to win the day. Have you shown you care? If not, now is the time. Find a balance between speaking your mind and saying too much. Well, that's a really good advice for me because I'm very prone to saying too much. Some people are like, they find it hard to express themselves. I find it hard to shut up, as my mother will attest. All right, gorgeous people. So we've been told, I think, um, I will see you, well, if you're Aquarius rising, click the link above and come and join us in about half an hour for this once a year workshop, which is just for you. And there's some really big astrology coming up for Aquarius rising people. Before anybody asks, it ain't for Aquarius. It's for Aquarius rising people. Um, and uh, otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. I'll see you 10 a. 10.30 a.m. for chanting. If you do chanting, just go to the events page on Facebook. And uh, I will see you, alternatively, I will see you here at 11, 11 a.m. tomorrow if you are around. And as Deeper says, have a blessed day, everybody. I'm going to end with a chant. Here we go with a chant. Let's all surrender our wishes to the divine. Here we go. Three Om Namo Narayanis. Om Namo Narayani Om Namo Narayani give everything over to the divine lots of love see you tomorrow